Bless the Lord today on this good Friday. Aren't you glad it was true love on this place? All on the hill called Calvary. 
that there was love that lifted you and I. When you and I were sinking deep in sin, it was the love of the Father where he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to pay our sin debt, to die on the cross for our sins. Come on, give Brother Greg another hymn to praise today for blessing us on today. As we celebrate, as we celebrate this Good Friday, listen, it was good for us, but it wasn't good for Jesus. It was out on the old rugged cross on the hill called Calvary where we see true love in action. A love that paved the way for our salvation. Look with me real quick today in John chapter 19 and verse 30. John chapter 19 and verse 30. And it reads, So when Jesus had received the sorrow wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the long road to redemption, to fulfill the mandate of the Father, was set in motion. See, we were designed to have fellowship with the Father. We were designed to have access to the Father. We were created in his image and after his likeness. He created us to be his kingdom representatives on earth. You know the whole story that the sin, the fall of man in the garden. And now, and now that sin has entered the world, the Bible declares that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, that includes you and I. All have sinned. And sometimes we say y'all sin, but the Bible says all have sinned and come short of God's glory. The Bible says all the way from Genesis to Malachi, it was promised that God would send the Savior, that God would send the Redeemer to redeem mankind from his sins. But listen, we hear in the book of Matthew that we hear talking about coming through 42 generations. Jesus, God's son, born of a virgin, wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. We read in God's word that angels are announcing his birth. This baby, this baby Jesus has in his bloodstream the answer to our sins. He has the antidote for the sin problem of all of mankind. In fact, the solution to every one of our issues in life is simply found in Jesus. We see he's two years old now, two years old, and the wise men are coming to worship him. But the Bible declares that he has a hater on the scene, and this hater in the form of Herod, the king, and Herod wanted to kill him. And the Bible says that Joseph in a dream is warned to get up and flee and take the family down into Egypt. And Herod puts out a decree, puts out an order, the killing of every male child two years old and younger. And right now, right now, right now in this pandemic, I believe God is hiding us from the evil satanic forces of coronavirus. And right now, I believe he has us sheltering in place to simply hide us from the storms of life. And aren't you glad that God will hide you? When the storms of life are raging, God will hide you and keep you safe. Now listen, I don't know how long this virus is going to last, but once it's over, God will bring you out. And I know somebody believes right now that God is punishing us, but I don't believe that. I don't believe that God is punished because I believe that God is a God of love. And right now he has us sheltering in place to hide us from this horrible pandemic. But the Bible picks up again on the journey of Jesus. At the age of 12, he's growing in wisdom and stature. We find him in the temple 
And the Bible says that he is confounding the scholars. Jesus is fulfilling his purpose. And let me ask you on this Good Friday, are you fulfilling your purpose? Are you fulfilling the design that God has on your life? And the Bible says that the age of 33, we find him in the Garden of Gethsemane. In this garden, he's, he's warring against the flesh and the spirit. He, he's in conflict. He's in agony. And even though he's all God and he's all man, but he is confronted with the sins of man and having to die on the cross for sins he did not commit. But I am so glad as my Jesus went into prayer into that garden and the Bible says that he prayed and he prayed so hard that sweat like drops of blood were falling down from his brow. But the Bible says when he said to himself, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Aren't you glad for prayer? Prayer always brings victory. And I praise God for Jesus warring in the garden and getting the victory over sin. My Jesus got the victory through prayer in the garden and following the plan of the Father. He decrees and declares a neverthelessness. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. It's in prayer. It's in prayer that we get victory over coronavirus. Uh, it's only through prayer that we will get victory over this virus that's plaguing the world. You know the story that Jesus gets up from praying. Uh, the soldiers come to arrest him. He is betrayed with a kiss. And Peter takes out his sword and attempts to defend Jesus, cuts off the ear of Malchus. But Jesus tells Peter, put away your sword. He who lives by the sword will perish by the sword. Can't you see Jesus reaching down and picking up the ear of Malchus and putting it back on his head? That should have been enough to show them who he was. But isn't it amazing? It is amazing as they take him off and the suffering that he experienced on that Thursday night. False witnesses claiming he said he would destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. Can you imagine that night? People spitting in his face. He's beaten with their fists. They slap him. And they whip him with fragments. Whip him with a whip that had fragments of metal and bone in the whip. And there he is, taking on the agony and the shame for you and I. And see, everybody likes Sunday morning. As a preacher, I love Sunday morning. Because every Sunday morning, we get to tell the same old story in a new and fresh way. All of us love Sunday morning. Sunday morning is where we come and celebrate the fact of what Jesus did for us in our life. But on Thursday night, but on Thursday night, the agony and the shame he endured for us. And somebody needs to hear on today, before you can get to Sunday morning, it's got to be a Thursday night. There's got to be a Friday. That you got to go through your pain. You have got to suffer through it all. But Jesus suffering in my place and your place. And none of us, none of us ever like to suffer. Uh, none of us ever want to go through the hardships of life. And right now we're suffering through Corona. And the devil wants you to believe that this coronavirus is causing the end. But I got good news for you. This too shall pass. This is not the end. Sunday morning is coming. And then we keep on with the story. On Friday, he's led up to Golgotha, the place of the skull. And this horrible death 
by Roman crucifixion. Romans had perfected crucifixion. Can't you see your Jesus had been beaten black and blue and carrying this cross up this hill called Golgotha to the place of the skull? Beaten, hardly recognizable for your sins and my sins. Crown of thorns platted on his head and they laid him down on the ground on the cross. Not sure if they thought he would run, but he said, if you think I'll run, nail my feet. He said, if you think I'm going to fight back, he says, simply nail my hands. But listen, they made the horrible mistake. They didn't know that Jesus had said, if you lift me up. He says, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men unto me. Listen, listen, in this pandemic right now, I believe this is a great time to simply lift up Jesus. As you're staying in the house, lift up Jesus with your family. When you go on the internet, lift up Jesus with your friends. Lift up the name of Jesus. They lifted up my Savior, and somebody said they lifted him high, and they dropped him low. My Jesus hanging on this cross. And the Bible says, from the sixth to the ninth hour, Darkness fell on the earth. From 12 noon till 3 p.m., it's dark. And others are walking around the cross and they're hurling insults at him. They're mocking him, telling him to save yourself. If you're who you say you are, come on down from the cross. But aren't you glad he didn't come down from the cross? Somebody said he would not come down. He's on his mission. He's on his journey. He is fulfilling the purpose for which he came. Now here's what I came to tell you about on this Good Friday. When darkness settled in, the greatest transaction that has ever taken place in the world, here again, the greatest transaction that has ever taken place in the world, Jesus, who knew no sin, takes on my sins and your sins. Here is Jesus. Darkness has fallen, and in the midst of darkness, Jesus is becoming sin, who knew no sin. He's taken on your sins and mine. All the sins way back from the Garden of Eden and the sins that were done in the Old Testament, the sins that you and I have done on yesteryear and yesterday and will do on tomorrow. Jesus is taking on the sin debt for you and I. The awful price he paid for sin as his blood ran down on Calvary into the very dust of the ground he had made man of. Jesus dying for the sins of man. And I cannot imagine, cannot imagine on that cross, Jesus screaming out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This relationship he had with his father. And you know the story that God could not look on sin. And Jesus now, the face of all of our sins, taking our sins to the cross, and his father couldn't look upon him. And Jesus feels the loneliness and separation from the Father. Sin always causes separation. And I'm glad, even though Good Friday was horrible for Jesus, I'm so glad it was good for you and I. Because if Jesus had not died on the cross, we'd still be living in our sins. We would still be living a hopeless life. We'd still be a wretch undone. But because he died and declared it is finished, the payment for sin has finally been paid. The Bible says, the Bible says, when, when Jesus gave up the ghost, when he died, the Bible says that the veil in the temple was ripped from top to bottom. The Bible says the earth shook. That was a major earthquake. Rocks were split into two when he died on Calvary. 
The Bible says that the penalty for my sins had now been paid in full and salvation is now available for everyone. And there's good news on Good Friday that salvation is now available but only through the precious blood of Jesus. And on this Good Friday, you need to know that you are saved by grace. And we teach here at the Bethel Church that salvation comes in three parts. Past, present, and future. I have been saved from the penalty of sins. I am being saved from the power of sin. And one of these days when Jesus comes back, I'm going to be saved from the very presence of of sin. Let me prove my point. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26. It's on the screen. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the age, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. In the past, Jesus paid the penalty for my sins once and for all. The penalty has been paid. Not only has the penalty been paid, but right now, I'm being saved from the power of sin. Once I accept Jesus as my personal Savior, Holy Spirit now lives on the inside of me. Hebrews 9.24 says, For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are the copies or figures of the truth, but into heaven himself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. You are the shout hallelujah, because now you have an advocate in the Father, on the right hand of the Father, and every time we pray, Hallelujah today. We have an advocate in the Father who gives us our help via the Holy Ghost to help us through any situation. And even right now with coronavirus, we've got the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we can make it through anything because God dwells on the inside of us. And not only have I been saved from the penalty of sin, not only am I being saved from the power of sin, but hallelujah, one of these days, I'm going to be saved from the very presence of sin. Hebrews 9, 28 says that so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, but to those who eagerly await for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin unto salvation. The songwriter wrote the song, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It was on Friday that the blood of my Savior streamed down from Calvary and in the midst of shame, in the midst of pain, he did it all for you and I. He died in my place. He died in your place. He died for all of my sins. He said, it is finished. And Good Friday, Good Friday, is about what God had promised a long time ago simply come into pass. Good Friday is about God loving you and I so much that he would send his only begotten son to pay the penalty for your sin. As I close out this encouragement message to you, let me ask you, what has God promised you on this good Friday? What has God promised you? 
and all of his promises, God is able to fulfill. In the middle of sickness, sadness, and death, fear, anxiety, and worry, God is able to fulfill every promise he has made. Stop your worry. Stop the anxiety. Stop the fear. Hallelujah. Because our God will bring it to pass. Please know on today, if you're out of the will of the Father, if you're out of the ark of safety, never knowingly have invited Jesus into your life, maybe have strayed away from the fellowship of the local church, you need to know Jesus said it's finished. The penalty for sin has been paid. Your past is forgiven. Your past sins are forgiven. The shame is forgiven. The guilt has been taken away. The bitterness has been removed. The debt has been paid. All fears are now gone. Insecurity has vanished. Why? All because of a Savior named Jesus. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? On this Good Friday, on this Good Friday, whatever is holding you hostage, whatever has you bound, Jesus can free you on this day. He came, he lived, and he died. And right now he is seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and I. Jesus says it's finished, it's over, it's done. And now we all can walk in victory. Give God a hand of praise today right where you are. Come on, give him a hand of praise today. It is finished. We bless God today for his word. Now, as you're watching me today, it's on the screen right now. You can text to join. Text us your name and your email address. Counselors are waiting to get in touch with you. You can receive Jesus today right where you are. Simply invite him into your heart to save you. But we would love to speak to you. Bethel and our friends, go to the Bethel Facebook page. I'd love to hear from you just to say hi, uh, to comment on the messages. I pray, I pray that we are being a blessing to you through our broadcast. Let's go for prayer every day. I go out, Father, how we thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for sending him. And thank you for dying on Calvary for all of our sins. But in just a few days, we thank you for getting up on Sunday morning that we could have a right to the tree of life. And God, on this Good Friday, we pray for those who are mourning, those who lost loved ones, those who are in hospitals, we pray for doctor and nursing staff and, Lord, for all those who are working to deal with this coronavirus. You heal, save, and deliver. And we bless your name right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. you got to go, but see you on Sunday morning. Say Sunday morning. Sunday morning. See you this Sunday. In Jesus' name.